Hi, my name is Chi Te Liang. On behalf of our team, I am going to present experimental results on violation of Pauli paramagnetic limit and two-dimensional superconductivity in aluminum nanofilms grown by MBE. This work was mostly done by my PhD students Qing Chen Ye and Guan Ming Su. The high quality samples were provided by Professor Shen Di Lin's group at NCTU. The outline of my talk is the following. First, I'm going to describe the samples. I shall mention some basic theoretical background, namely the BCS theory and the Wehrhammer Helfen Hohenberg WHH for short theory. I shall talk about topological transitions and upper critical magnetic field limits. I'm going to present our experimental results both at zero magnetic field and in a magnetic field. Finally, I'll summarize our results. All the samples were grown on a gallium masonite substrate by MBE. We needed to grow a gallium masonite buffer layer before growing an aluminum nanofilm. The as grown film thickness ranged from 3 nm to 4 nm. As you can see in the TEM image, aluminum does get oxidized on the surface. This oxide layer prevents the aluminum nanofilm from further oxidation, and the devices are air stable for over a year. For the 3 nm thick aluminum nanofilm, the surface roughness movement square is around 0.29 nm. The aluminum oxide layer is around 1 to 2 nm. We process our whole bar devices by optical lithography. Preparing these devices is not straightforward and the details can be found in this paper. According to the BCS theory, a Cooper pair can be formed as a result of electron phonon coupling. The superconducting gap is given by 1.76 times the Boltzmann constant times the critical temperature Tc. The conventional BCS theory does not consider spin-orbit coupling. When there exists such an effect, then one may use the WHH theory. Several pertinent physical quantities are listed here, for example, lambda SO, lambda alpha, and Tc. The well-known Berenzinski cosinates Thales BKT for short transition is a topological transition. In the field of superconductivity, we probe the nonlinear IV characteristics of a two dimensional system to determine the critical temperature. A strong magnetic field can suppress superconductivity. There are two upper critical magnetic field limits. The first one is the orbital limit, and the second one is the spin paramagnetic limit, the Pauli limit, which is related to the Zeeman effect. The orbital limit is determined by the Lorentz force acting on the Cooper pair. In this case, we can measure HC2 in the orbital limit. As shown in this figure, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plan of the 2D system. In the orbital limit, the WHH theory is beyond the BCS model. The fit is more complicated and we have to consider the digamma function. The Zeeman effect can cause spin polarization, thereby resulting a spin singlet to spin triplet transition. 
In this case, Cooper pairs can be broken. As I mentioned earlier, the gap is given by 1.76 times KB times TC. If we plug in the G factor and the Borg magneton, we can see that the paramagnetic limit is given by 1.85 times TC in kilo Earth step, KOE. We now turn our attention to the experimental results. Let's concentrate on the data taken on the 3 nanometer thick aluminum film. If time permits, I could show you results on the 3.5 nanometer and 4 nanometer thick devices. We did extensive current voltage measurement at different temperatures. At 2 Kelvin, there still exists a small supercurrent. At 0.25 Kelvin, the critical current increases with increasing film thickness. In the linear regime, we can measure the resistance as a function of temperature. When the measure value reaches the half value of the normal state, we can determine the critical temperature to be 2.33 Kelvin. We know that this is substantially higher than that of bulk aluminum, which is 1.2 Kelvin. Therefore, even with this data set, we already enhanced the Pauli paramagnetic limit by almost 100%. The superconducting Transition temperature does seem to oscillate a bit, but I will not overclaim this effect. These films are not atomically flat anyway. To further probe the superconductivity in the aluminum nanofilm, we perform detailed nonlinear IV measurements, as you can see here. When V is proportional to I to the third, we can measure the BKT transition temperature, which is around 2.25 Kelvin, this value is pretty close to the BCS transition temperature. When we perform the magneto transform measurement shown here, the magnetic field was either perpendicular or parallel to the plane of the aluminum nanofield. We were not able to perform in situ QT field measurement, so we had to warm the system up, take the sample out, rotate the sample, and cool it down again, which is a bit of pain. Anyway, when the measured resistance is equal to half of the normal state, we are able to measure the upper critical magnetic field as a function of temperature. When the magnetic field is Parallel to the plane of the aluminum nanofilm, we can see that HC2 exceeds the Pauli paramagnetic limit. The fit is much better in the high temperature regime. We're not quite sure about the deviation at low temperatures. The take home message is that it is possible to violate the Pauli paramagnetic limit. When the WHH model is taken into account at low temperature, the fits get better, and we are able to estimate the spin orbit coupling strength, which increases with increasing film thickness. In the normal state, we can see positive magneto resistance, which can be ascribed to weak anti-localization. It is believed that the EY mechanism, which is the main spin relaxation effect in metals, is the dominant spin orbit coupling effect in you know, aluminum nanofilm. The atomic mass of aluminum nanofilm is quite low, so it's perhaps surprising to see some spin orbit effect in our system. We can see that the estimated spin orbit scattering time 
decreases with decreasing film thickness. For the thickest sample, the critical magnetic field is close to the Pauli limit. Only for the thinnest device, we can definitely say that we have seen violation of Pauli limit. In summary, we have studied MBE grown aluminum nanofilms. Both the critical temperature and upper critical limit fields are higher than those of bulk aluminum. This is perhaps useful for superconductivity related applications. We have observed clear experiment evidence for the BKT transition in all the aluminum film. The BKT transition temperature and the BCS transition temperature are close. Finally, we have seen violation of Pauli paramagnetic limit in the thinnest device. Just would like to mention 3 nanometer is the thinnest for which the sample conducts at room temperature. Thank you very much for your kind attention.